Welcome to Vermont Today. I'm your host, Terry Gerolman, and my guest this time is uh, Phyllis Knight. Uh, Phyllis recently uh, moved to Burlington, and uh, she moved into the same apartment house where I live. And uh, we both live on the, uh, the sixth floor at Three Cathedral Square. It's an ideal place to live, uh, right in the center of Burlington. Uh, we can walk to everything. Uh, from the top floor, we have a nice view of the lake. Uh, right behind us, uh, you can see the, uh, the uh, view of the lake that we have from, uh, from the community room on top of Cathedral Square. Um, Phyllis, uh, would you like to tell us uh, what brought you to Burlington and, and wh where you came from? Yes, I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I'm extremely fortunate because I had experienced a lot of mountainness, a lot of outside time, and a lot of love of rocks and plants and fish and water. So uh, Burlington suited me perfectly when my son moved here five years ago to teach at South Burlington Middle, in middle School and High School. Um, two years ago, uh, I was able to be notified by Three Cathedral Square that my name might be coming up within a year. So uh, very fortunately on April 21st, 2011, I was able to sign my agreement and contract with Cathedral Square. And I've been extremely pleased with the entire town, with the attitude of the people. It's exactly what I had in the mountains and in the city of Pittsburgh. So if someone should like to visit Pittsburgh from this area, you would feel very comfortable in western Pennsylvania. Uh, I also met Terry uh, probably a couple months after I moved to Burlington. He invited me to go on the art walk with him, which was my first art walk, and I sincerely will always thank you for that. I really enjoyed that and have taken other people since then on that wonderful adventure. That's one of the special things we have here in Burlington. Every month on the first Friday, uh, there's an art walk, and uh, uh, I, I enjoy uh, going around to the different galleries and, uh, and seeing uh, the, the art, and uh, often there's uh, refreshments, uh, cheese and wine, and um, the art always looks better after a glass of wine. Uh, don't you think so, Phyllis? Not only that, but it's the makeup of the individual artists. They all have such a, a, a variable uh, attitude on their art and so therefore they're such individuals as you know uh, when we've been on the art walk some are sitting just in the corner looking at you and some are there almost stalking you and you have others that are uh, just so excited about what they've done they want to make sure you know what they've done but the most interesting part of our uh, artwork here in Burlington is it's all ages these artists are from very young to in their 80s. I have seen such a wide variety of, of productive artists uh, to include a young gentleman who was 16 at the Art Hop who was producing beautiful, beautiful uh, from, fra from fabric hats, dresses, and other objects that you could place in a home, which I thought was the variety. It's the variety that is stunning, along with the capacity and the age range. It's, it's art for everyone. Being an artist myself, and having studied uh, art history at the, uh, the Sorbonne in Paris, I, I enjoy uh, talking with the, the artists about the, the theory uh, behind their work and uh, the, their techniques. Um, uh, my uh, my uh, approach to art was a little bit different than uh, what we generally see since I started out as a, a computer engineer. I got my first degree in electrical engineering from Northeastern University in Boston. And uh, so I, I, I wrote a computer program to, uh, which creates the art. And the, the creative aspect of what I do is in, as an artist is, was in the writing of the computer program and then in the selection of the uh, art that the program produces. And so I have... Uh, I have that art hang, hanging on my wall in my apartment, and, uh, and I've done a couple of shows. I did a show at the library in Waterbury for a month, and uh, so it, I enjoy uh, talking with the artists on the art walk. Yes. Uh, I was extremely impressed when, after I knew you for a few months, 
you were able to retrieve from your apartment one of your beautiful works of art, and you explained to me how you had produced it. And I thought oh, that was just wonderful because actually I also was an art major in college and studied, um, the, of course, the wonderful masters, the great masters, and sculpting. Uh, I love all venues in art, every bit of it. There isn't a part that isn't of great interest to me. But I thought it was so wonderful how you held it out like this and said, this is what I made. And I was absolutely thrilled to death. The only error of that day was you forgot to give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. That remedy shall come down the path. <laughs> I'll see if we can do something about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, the other thing for, that I've um, enjoyed about our art here in Burlington is as we perhaps take a stroll through one of the hotels, one of the restaurants, it's so wonderful because perhaps you have seen something maybe six months ago at an art walk, and there it is, hanging up on another wonderful display for you to enjoy at another time. Or in a, it could be a clothing shop. And I love how the businesses allow the art to adorn their walls so that you don't have to just wait for a once a month art walk. But uh, as you know, I'm a huge favor of the art hop. And if anyone hasn't been to the art hop, I would encourage them to make plans to attend this fall when it happens. It's usually in September. Uh, I, I don't remember uh, the date, but that is a special uh, once, a, once a year. It's a once a year event. And on the south end, they almost always have free Ben & Jerry's ice cream. So you don't want to miss that. Uh, my favorite ice cream is Ben & Jerry's. Correct. And I also am aware that you can get in line more than once to have more than one serving of Ben & Jerry's. Yeah, some people do that. I, I think so. I've, I've witnessed a few that had, but of course, um, I'm watching my figure, so I'm not overeating at this time. <laughs> uh, the other things that I really enjoy about Burlington is how they're always striving, whether it's a street, a business, a person. Everyone seems to be striving to improve themselves or include an area that hadn't been included, so nice things get expanded upon. And Last year, compared to this year, I, of course, am always looking for what are they growing? Who's growing it? Because I'm also a master gardener, so I'm always looking for uh, who's contributing. And we are so fortunate, down by our lake, near the boathouse, there are several gardens. And if people haven't looked, these are called America's Gardens. America's Gardens are planted in many cities across the United States through the local university's effort and the effort of the Master Gardening Program so that you can see what is growing, growing well and what you might try to grow yourself next year. So we have that right down by the boathouse. There's three different plantings and I would encourage anyone to go down. They're all labeled so you'll know what you're looking at. Take some paper, take a pencil and go down and enjoy that. I like to be there in the morning. I take my dog down every day, so, unless it's really undoable. But most of the time, so I'm there five days a week early. Between That's one of the special things about the building where we live. Yes. There are 108 apartments. In, uh, it's a, a nine-story building, uh, but many of the people have, have dogs, and, and you have a dog by the name of uh, Lady. Yes. 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 Her, she has a last name, too, because she was a throwaway dog. I decided that she should have, you know, a, li a little bit of, um, oh, dignity. So I gave her a last name, and her last name is Habowski, H-O-W-C-O-W-S-K-Y. And that's Polish for hobo in my own ethnic manner. <laughs> so her name is Lady Habowski. Yes. And I know you've met her. She's part Beagle and part Springer Spaniel and part something else. But she has a wonderful personality. She loves people. And I'm the lady that pushes the pink buggy around town because my dog has fear of large dark or large brown dogs. So That's a pink baby carriage. It's a pink, but it is called a pet buggy. So it is for dogs, and it comes in pink or blue or navy or black. And I have a pink one because she's a little girl. 
And I've had Lady for almost four years now. She, as I say, I found her in a huge pile of ice, uh, probably about eight and a half or nine feet tall, and it was wiggling. I thought it was dirty ice or snow. It turned out to be a dog. It was February. It was sad. But she's been able to live and have a happy life now. And you sent her to school, too, right? Oh, my goodness, yes. I'm so fortunate. I found an instructor uh, that took her through several levels of training. Um, I would say she has had about 70 one-hour classes in dog training where I go with her. The uh, program that we c completed in the end is one through the Westminster Dog Program and also uh, another program where they uh, determine whether or not your dog can ever become aggressive. And this is a sad program. They really aggravate the dogs. You're not allowed to be there. And they put them through a lot of tussling. But it's, it's a warranted program, and that way you know the personality and disposition of your animal. But yes, she has turned out to be an A student. She's one class away from being a therapy dog if I would want her to have that certification. But I don't think it's necessary. I think I'm done taking her to school at this time, at this time. Oh, the reason I took her to school, when I got her, my husband was very ill. It was before he, a couple years before he died, and I surely didn't want a dog. I could not find a home for this poor dog. So when I found out I was going to keep her, I said, well, you're just going to have to expand on your education, so if something happens to me, you will have a home. And that's why I did it, so that she most certainly will be homebound her whole life, no matter what happens. That's how you ended up uh, finding the gardens by the boathouse behind us here. That's correct. You, you walk uh, your dog down there. Every morning I'm there. I'm, I'm the early bird girl down there and I'm on, on the first day basis, of course, um, at the booth where you must pay or show your membership that you're a card-carrying member uh, here in the state. Uh, when I park there or walk down there, it's such a wonderful way to start the day because I, we have people from almost every state in the United States, of course from Canada. These people pull up with their bicycles, perhaps as many as three vans and 20 people with bicycles all over these vehicles, and they are so happy because they're out there getting ready to enjoy our bike trails. And I hear them say, gee, I wonder what condition they're in this year. Oh, I hope they've been able to repair it from Irene and all of these little words. And I'm just like a little little fly on the wall and listen to all these happy people and happy families. But they really come from great distances here to enjoy our waterfront. And, the, and I hear them speak. They're here for maybe a day and a half or two days. Very few of them are here for a week. And uh, I, that's why I'm so grateful in the area that these people would travel we do have beautiful flowers. We do have beautiful plants. Of course, we have Cherry Street and Pearl Street under construction with a lot of debris and trash that we wish weren't there, but we know we'll be improving upon that shortly. So the people from out of town as they come will be able to soon say, my goodness, look at the improvements on Pearl Street and Cherry. So that will be greatly received by them, I'm sure. The, the bike path is a, a really special attraction in Burlington, don't you think? Oh, definitely. I mean, these people, you, you know that this is their family vacation or a bike club that they've chosen our area. And they have such enthusiasm in their heart. And they're there. They go over their entire bike, make sure everyone has their water filled. Um, there, it, it's so much enthusiasm. They take, they're there with their gallon filling up everyone's uh, bottles. making. And, when, of course, when it's hot, some of them had the misters, so that they'd be able to mist themselves as they were biking. A lot of plan You can see the planning that they go through to come here. This isn't just a slip shot. We don't know we're gonna, where we're going to end up or go. They really come and really enjoy themselves with a great plan. And I'm sure they're spending a lot of money. These aren't cheap bikes. These aren't people that didn't plan. You can tell they saved for this, these vacations and that their goal is to really enjoy our bike paths, without a doubt. I went to an ice cream social just a couple of days ago. Was uh, it a Ben and Jerry's one? Uh, uh, yes, it was Ben and Jerry's, uh, but it was put on at City Hall by uh, BTV. And uh, they're uh, planning uh, uh, an upgrade to the, uh, the bike path, and generally uh, uh, to Burlington, 
uh, to improve and make our city more uh, interesting to, uh, uh, to new people coming in. Um, and I, I, I'm happy that uh, they're uh, going to uh, refurbish the bike path, repair the damage that Irene caused, and perhaps make it even better. Because it is, it is a very important part of Burlington. Oh, yeah. And an, another thing under consideration is the, uh, uh, from Cherry Street, where we live, uh, it, you have, it's a long walk to get down to the uh, uh, waterfront because you have to walk uh, three or four blocks uh, south in, in order to go down College Street and around. Um, whereas it would be so nice if we could have a stairway going down from Cherry Street down the Oh, line. yes. It's impossible to get down that hill uh, unless you have a, a walkway or a funicular. Uh, one of the suggestions that the... Uh, uh, meeting uh, at City Hall was to have a funicular there. Uh, but don't you think it would be nice to have both a stairway and a funicular? Oh, yes. That way, should the funicular have a mechanical issue, you would still be able to negotiate and enjoy. Oh, absolutely. And I could imagine bicycles on it uh, so that they could get down to our important bike trails more quickly, and which would make their hearts happier, of course. Absolutely. I will also say uh, the hotel that's being built across the street from us, I'm not sure if it's going to be called Hotel Vermont or Hotel Burlington. It makes no difference. But you take that hotel that will be opening in the spring probably and the Marriott and the Hilton, those are a lot of rooms filled with a lot of people that have chosen to come and spend their time here, which means their money also and to have as many trees and flowers and conveniences to, so that these people could go right down to the water. We have such wonderful uh, bookings of so, just so much talent and wonderful music. I keep my windows open in my apartment because I face the water and to hear the echo of the beautiful music coming up that hill and right into my apartment, it's, it's breathtaking. It's just fabulous. It, it energizes you. So I can imagine when they go to the Marriott, the Hilton, or the Tubi Hotel for Burlington or um, Vermont, that'll be another group of people that would love to go down those steps or down that funicular and into those gorgeous white tents where they have all that wonderful entertainment and food and talent. And we have all the triathlons and our drummers when they start, the taiko drummers, when they start with their drumming, the people line up around there and absolutely take on the rhythm and pick out their favorite drummers. The um, marathon that is the Sun Bank, no, I'm sorry, Key Bank Marathon. I'm thinking of a sunny day. <laughs> We were so fortunate because the sun didn't get too warm. And the people, as they were grouped around those drums, waiting for the runners to come, because that's another event. I'm out early with my cowbell, and I'm following that marathon. It was just wonderful to see. I wasn't the only one following those runners, dodging in and out of the streets to see who was holding what position, and then to hurry up and be down at the finish line and see all of the uh, cheering from so many people, again, of all different ages. And this is another thing that happens here in our, in our beautiful city. We have such a wide variety of ages taking place in, they're taking part in everything, Terry. They're there. This view behind us is the view from your window, in your yes, apartment. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. And um, my, my apartment faces north. So uh, I get a view of the garden. The garden is kind of special too. Um, you spoke of the uh, the gardens at the at the waterfront. Yes. But uh, in our building, we uh, we have I, I think it's about twelve uh, garden plots in the uh, in the backyard. And each uh, resident, if uh, that wants to do a garden, has a choice in the spring of uh, applying for one of the plots. And and so each plot belongs to a, a resident, and they can grow whatever they want there. Yes. And so that's my view. But I can go up to the uh, community room on the uh, ninth floor to get the view behind us uh, that you have from your apartment. Right. And they call that at our building Top of the Square, which I think is a wonderful name 
for it because you go all the way up to the ninth floor and you can look around or look across to see the beautiful mountains, which are breathtaking. Uh, to see those mountains and to see the sunset that I get to see every day is just, uh, it's, it's paradise. It is really paradise, too. You haven't uh, gotten involved in the uh, Flatlander woodchuck uh, uh, dichotomy yet? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think I have? Well, um, it's, uh, it's everyone's perception. Uh, uh, one thing about Vermont uh, uh, is that some people are identified as Flatlanders, and they, they fall into this category for life. Uh, both of us, I think, are, 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 are condemned to this uh, category for forever and ever. And um, uh, I, I wonder if uh, maybe uh, we shouldn't rethink uh, this division in Vermont. Uh, half more, uh, it's going to approach the point where half of the population is uh, our Flatlanders uh, pretty soon. And, uh, and if they, we're not accepted by the Woodchucks, why uh, it's possible we might uh, vote against some of the woodchucks. Um, uh, Jackman Mullen, uh, for instance, is running uh, for attorney general on the Republican ticket uh, in November. And, uh, and he, a few years ago, in 1998, he lost uh, an election uh, for the uh, U.S. Senate. And uh, uh, He's exceptionally well qualified. He's a professor at Harvard, and he has an MBA degree and a law degree. And uh, and uh, he was defeated by uh, a farmer uh, with a tenth grade education. McMullen, uh, the farmer, spent two hundred dollars on his campaign. McMullen spent half a million. Um, now I'm I'm a progressive, and so I, I disagree very much with McMullen as far as politics go, but. Uh, I, I think that uh, he was, after all, running on the, in the Republican primary. And it, it seems to me that uh, it, it's, uh, it's not in the best interest of Vermont uh, or the people of Vermont to uh, not uh, consider uh, a candidate on their, their qualifications and judge them simply on whether or not they were born in Vermont. Uh, the, the U.S. Constitution guarantees everyone in the, the United States the right to move between states. And Vermonters have uh, the right to move to other states, and, and they're accepted when they move to New York. And it seems to me that uh, it's only fair that New Yorkers and people from other parts of the country should be accepted on an equal basis when they move to Vermont. Um, so I hope that uh, this situation will improve as, uh, as uh, more people move in into the state. Um, what do you think, Phyllis? Is that reasonable? Well, I feel that it's very reasonable. Actually, coming from western Pennsylvania, I was raised in the city until I was in kindergarten. And then the polio outbreak, outbreak occurred. And fortunately, my family had 1,200 acres about. 40 minutes outside of Pittsburgh, and we had a broodmare farm. My father had a uh, Cape Cod home built, and fortunately, about two miles from that home was a one-room schoolhouse with eight grades in it. All of our neighbors got their land title and deed because they fought in the Revolutionary War. So, of course, they were all five generations, give or take. As, as neighbors. And unfortunately, I was raised as a Catholic, and that community was entirely Presbyterian. And my mother had a conversation with me which said, and my father and my sisters, this is where we live, this is where you will go to school, and this is where you will go to church. And by immersing ourselves into the community, and taking pride in what our neighbors did, we were accepted. And I have the great feeling in my heart of knowing and uh, enjoying all of these people. And to this day, I am in touch with them. 
and my one one of my one room schoolhouse teachers uh, is still alive she's close to a hundred and i'm in touch with her and she's always delighted to she still of course writes me beautiful letters and so i feel the same thing about vermont i was raised in an area where i was presumed to be an outsider and because i immersed myself i have been absolutely swept in by all of them and i held political office in the area was very active in their church taught bible school you name it i did it and i helped them repair their fences helped them care for their animals when they were sick helped re rebuild a barn when it burned down and i think it's the same here i think if you immerse yourself into the community that you call home i think you most certainly do have a home and that's just just how I was raised, and that's what I really believe in. Well, hopefully Vermont will be as open-minded as uh, the people in Pennsylvania. Oh, I believe so. I've already met many of them, and I haven't found anyone that's classified me as a, quote, anything, because mm -hmm. I think it's difficult to really class people. Uh, it takes a whole life to evolve. It takes a whole life to become what you are. And as you know from Wednesday, we are not totally informed yet. So we don't know what will evolve to be. Only time will tell. But we're always growing if we're out and about. And I know you're out and about, so I know you're always growing. Mm -hmm. well, one of the things that uh, uh, I introduced Phyllis to was the uh, Progressive Party yes. uh, when she moved in. And she, uh, she joined the... Uh, the uh, uh, city committee and also the state committee. And uh, uh, how do you feel about progressive politics in the state? Yes. Well, I'm very comfortable with uh, progressive politics. Uh, it, uh, it, it just fits the way I feel and the way I, I think, because I feel that you, again, when I was talking about the rural community that I spent so much of my childhood in, uh, it is getting to know each other's needs by getting to know another person's needs you get to know that person well because if they have a need is it a what type of a need is it that's there uh, is this something that was uh, thrown upon them because they didn't ask this would be an Irene situation or is this a situation where academically they weren't able to achieve because they didn't have the finances to complete their education at the level that they could have? So there are needs. Uh, and this is why I like the Progressive Party. I believe it looks into uh, the needs of people and really tries to be aware of what their emotions would be and why. I strongly feel the majority of people wake up every day wanting to have a happy day and be very kind to other people. And I think the Progressive Party has that mood, that feeling. As um, I can remember my very first meeting, of course, when I met uh, some of our uh, progressive active people in, in our community, and they carried that. They carried that very well and made me feel comfortable immediately. I recommend anyone to come to one of our meetings. They don't have to be uh, active or what. They could just want to come and sit and listen to us to find out what we talk about. We don't have a closed door policy. We most certainly open the door. We frequently host the uh, Progressive Party meetings uh, at the top of the square uh, where we live uh, on the ninth floor. And we, uh, everyone has this view and uh, we uh, supply refreshments and uh, and we well, talk about politics. And then, and then, with frequency, we even do a potluck dinner, which is usually quite elegant and nice, with uh, nice little touches. Terry has some extra talent, and he puts it forward and makes everyone very comfortable at those events. Really so there are advantages to joining the Progressive Party. Uh, and we need more activists, too. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I mentioned earlier uh, uh, Jack McMullen. Uh, I'm perhaps might be uh, a mirror image of him. Uh, he's a conservative Republican. I'm uh, on the other side of the spectrum, a uh, 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 progressive. Um, but we have a similar background that we both have law degrees. We both started out as uh, in electrical engineering. 
and we both have MBAs. Um, so, uh, uh, and we're both uh, Flatlanders, so we moved to Vermont. I moved here shortly after he did. Um, so uh, from uh, starting out from a similar uh, background, you can end up with different political perspectives. And I ended up uh, with a progressive perspective, and he's a Republican. So, uh, <laughs> With Terry, you are running for a political office. And I'm very proud of you for doing that. And I would like for you to take a couple minutes out, if, this, if you're comfortable at this time, and tell people why you're running for this office, what can they expect of you in holding this office, should you win, because I do really do hope you win. Uh, and, uh, and also, what, are, what really entails the, the whole um, profile of this particular political office? Yes, I'm, I'm running uh, uh, to represent Chittenden County in the Vermont State Senate. Uh, I'm one of six, uh, uh, Chittenden County has six seats in the Senate. Uh, so uh, in November, uh, six people will be elected by the uh, residents of the county at large to represent the county in the Senate. And, uh, and I'm asking people to vote uh, uh, for me on the progressive uh, party line. Um, I, uh, one of the motivations for moving to Vermont was Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is the only socialist in the United States uh, Senate. Um, I'm a socialist. Um, I, I've traveled in 30 countries. Uh, while I was in law school, I, uh, I studied law in, uh, first in, uh, in London, and uh, then uh, the following summer I, I spent in, uh, in Paris uh, studying law. And after, uh, after I graduated, I, I uh, spent time at the Sorbonne uh, in Paris, uh, uh, becoming fluent in French. Uh, I also studied law in, uh, in, uh, at the University of Tula in Sweden and uh, the Swedish language at uh, Folk uh, University in, in Stockholm. Uh, so I, I lived in, I've lived in the French-speaking countries for about two years. And, and I, I lived in, in Sweden uh, overall for uh, counting several uh, periods for uh, about a year. Uh, I'm, I'm fluent in French and I'm, I'm almost fluent in Swedish. Um, but watching uh, these different uh, political systems, uh, I, I was in Sweden for an election. They have seven parties in the parliament. Uh, uh, just before an election there, uh, they have a uh, a town, every, every city has a, a square in the center uh, where, uh, where they set up uh, like uh, little lawn buildings for each party. And so you have uh, nine or ten of these little uh, uh, buildings where if you, uh, you can go in and uh, talk to somebody about what that party stands for and receive election literature. And, and then uh, when the election comes around, uh, people are elected to the parliament by proportional representation. Uh, there's no uh, winner-take-all like we have here in America. So uh, if you vote for, uh, for the uh, Social Democrats uh, or you vote for the moderate Turner, the moderate Turner are the, their equivalent of the Republicans. And the Social Democrats have uh, been the majority party for a very good many years. And they've made Sweden what, what it's so known for is the, uh, the middle way. The, the socialist alternative where, uh, where everybody gets free health care, everybody gets free education. When I was there, uh, I didn't see any poor people at all. Uh, even, even those who would be really down and out here in Burlington, you can see them on the street and they're well dressed and they're taken care of. Uh, nobody falls through the cracks. Uh, everybody has an opportunity for free education. Uh, and and nobody uh, goes bankrupt because of health care. Um, but uh, so if the Social Democrats get 30% uh, of the uh, vote, they get 30% of the people in the parliament. The party chooses the candidates for the parliament. So there isn't this, uh, this problem of spending enormous amounts of money on an election. Now, in my election, I, I ran for the state senate two years ago. And the 
average candidate from uh, Chittenden County spent about ten thousand uh, dollars on the election. Um, one candidate, Philip Ruth, he spent, if I remember correctly, the thirty-six thousand dollars to be elected, uh, and uh, I think the minimum was something like eight thousand. Except for my campaign, I spent zero money on my campaign, um, and, and I uh, I ran for I was elected as ward clerk here in in Burlington. I I did a three year term as ward clerk. I spent zero money to be elected. I was elected in the same year that uh, Barack Obama was elected president of the United States, and actually in in Ward Three where I ran. I got more votes than Barack Obama did. So I, I won the election as ward clerk spending zero money on my campaign. Um, two years ago, I spent zero money on the Senate campaign. Unfortunately, I lost, but I expect to win the progressive primary on August 28th. I'm a candidate for the progressive primary, and I'm spending zero money, and I expect to win that primary. Now, the question is the, the general election in, uh, on November 6th. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, I am planning to spend zero money on that. And I'm asking the voters of Chittenden County to elect me to the state Senate, not based upon the amount of money I spend on campaigning. I don't want to buy the election. Uh, I want to be elected because I will represent the people of Chittenden County. I'm the best qualified candidate. And I believe that I am the best qualified candidate. I have a degree in electrical engineering. I have a master's degree in business administration. And I have a Juris Doctorate degree, which is a law degree, and I, I uh, was admitted to practice of law in New York State in 1986, uh, and I practiced for years in, in New York State before moving to uh, Vermont. I'm a member of the New York Bar. Uh, I believe that I can uh, do the best job, the best possible job for the people of Chittenden County, uh, but I'm not going to buy the election. Now, you can look at... Uh, uh, the, uh, the state website for the uh, 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 elections uh, and see how much everyone is spending. Uh, the uh, campaign finance reports are required every, uh, every uh, month, I think, uh, as candidates spend money. And if you see as candidates spending a lot of money, you can vote against them. And that's what I would do. Uh, if someone feels they have to buy the election, that must mean that they're not really qualified. And where is that money coming from? The, the uh, Sec Vermont Secretary of State's office breaks down the campaign reports in large donations and small donations. Now, when someone and most of the, the big money spenders are getting the money from large donors. Now, when somebody donates a lot of money up in the thousands of dollars to a candidate, you can be sure they expect something for that money. And that candidate is going to be representing the people that are donating the big money. They're not going to be representing the regular average 99% uh, of the population. Now, I, I, I uh, as a socialist, I'm going to represent the 99% of the population. I'm not going to represent the 1%. I believe that uh, uh, taxation should be a means of redistributing the wealth and taking uh, taxes, higher taxes, we should have a high a progressive taxation system, which they have in most countries in Europe, and which makes the, uh, the people best able to pay, pay the higher taxes, and the people least able to pay, pay much lower taxes. Uh, that's called uh, uh, proportional taxation. And uh, that's what's fair. And I think it's, it's, it's time that the, the rich started paying their fair share of taxes. Uh, they did back in the Carter administration. We had uh, a much more progressive uh, system of taxation. And now the federal taxes have been greatly reduced. And uh, the, this should be compensated for on the state level. The, the reduction in uh, federal taxes for the wealthy should be compensated for by a, a proportional increase in state taxes state income taxes on the wealthy so that they continue to pay what they did during the Clinton and Carter administrations. Uh, 
if this were done, we would have more than enough money to fund all state programs. There would be no uh, crisis and no question of uh, whether or not we could fund single-payer health insurance. I, I lived in Montreal. I had the Canadian health uh, system for two years. And that works, mar it's absolutely marvelous the way the Canadian system worked. Uh, I, I never had to wait for care. I never had to pay anything. And the overhead, the overhead is something like 3 or 4% of uh, the cost. Whereas the overhead in, uh, in the United States, 30% of the cost of health care is wasted on the, uh, the insurance forms and seeing if they can't cheat somebody out of their, uh, their, uh, the cost of their care and make them go bankrupt. 30% uh, of health care money is wasted this way. That 30% can be used to uh, insure all the uninsured people. Nobody needs to go without health care. So this is why uh, uh, I, I'm running for the Senate, because I believe that we need a socialist perspective. Uh, I want to use, give back to the society of my adopted state, the benefit of my education, my MBA, my uh, legal education, and my training in electrical engineering in the state Senate. And, this is why I believe I'm one of the best qualified candidates. I will represent the 99%. Now, there's the issue of the F-35s. Uh, the federal government wants to bring F-35s into the Burlington Airport. Uh, this is an enormously expensive aircraft. Uh, it's noisy. Uh, the, the, the sound uh, that these aircraft create is actually, uh, the federal government has determined that it makes the uh, the ground underneath uninhabitable. Now, this uninhabitable range uh, I around the airport is going to infringe upon people's homes where people have been living for years. And these homes were, they spent a lot of money uh, uh, paying off mortgages on these houses, and people have uh, uh, based their lives on the equity in their homes. They plan the retirements on. Uh, having equity in their home, which will finance retirement, and suddenly their home is an un what will be considered by buyers and real estate agents uninhabitable uh, uh, real estate. And that means that they're not going to be able to get their money out. They're, they're, suddenly their home becomes worthless. And the, the United States Constitution says that uh, uh, no one will be deprived of their property without due process of law and just compensation. Well, these people are not being compensated for the, uh, the, the result of this, this F-35 noise on their, their investment in their homes. And just take the, the downtown Winooski. The downtown Winooski is going to be affected by these, these aircraft. And there's something like $700,000 that was just invested in the upgrade and the renovation of the, the downtown. Uh, the downtown uh, circle in Winooski looks beautiful. Uh, and it was a fantastic job that they did on upgrading. And now, what is going to happen to this area? These, these planes are just going to destroy it with their, their sound and the noise. And who is going to want to go shopping there? Who is one gonna, going to want to live there? Who is going to want to work there? Um, this is a program that should be stopped. And I, and I was at the, we had 100 people demonstrating against the F-35 over at the, uh, the Democratic fundraiser at the Ethan Allen Homestead just uh, last week. And I was there uh, to demonstrate uh, against it. And uh, I hope that we will be able to stop the F-35. And you can count on me that if I'm elected to the state Senate, I will do everything within my power to prevent the F-35 from coming to Burlington. We don't need this weapon system here. Who are they going to bomb in Vermont? Who are they going to, there's just, just no need. And it makes us a target, too. If there were a, a general warfare, uh, it, uh, Burlington would be a prime target because of the F-35s. Uh, this is a, a peaceful state. Uh, we are a peaceful uh, people in Vermont. Our, our crime rate is one of the lowest in the nation, in spite of the fact that uh, 
that we have a, a, the most liberal gun laws in the nation. Um, and so uh, I, I'm asking people to vote for me for the uh, Senate in November. Um, what do you think, Phyllis? Are you going to vote for me? Oh, absolutely, Terry. Okay. But, you know, you brought up one other interesting thing about the uh, disturbance from the noise. Not only is that going to harm people's homes, sidewalk cafes, but think of the salmon hole on the Wisniewski River, the vibrations going into that water. I just wonder what's going to happen to the wildlife. Because, as we know, that leads toward the interval. That sound has to carry. And, and as I've, you do know how much I love nature, and I've spent an awful lot of my life just hoofing through hills. I just wonder, has anyone given any consideration to the habitat of those animals that live in those little uh, fen areas? Or, uh, you know, there's just so many. There's such a di huge diversity that inhabits that corridor, even though to the untrained eye it doesn't look like woods to them, perhaps, but that is. I walk, well, you know I walk the interval a lot, but that, that has to carry right down. It can't be a good thing. I think they'll be voting no for it also. That's a good point. There's a, a strong environmental issue there. Huge. Uh, I, I'm a member of the uh, uh, board of the North Country Sportsman's Club, where I uh, I shoot five stand and trap, uh, and uh, uh, hunting is a, a long tradition in, uh, in Vermont. We have a, a deer herd here mm -hmm. uh, that is harvested every, uh, uh, every fall uh, by uh, avid Vermont hunters. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wonder, having these F-35s with this enormous sound uh, flying over northern Vermont, uh, which is prime hunting area for the, mm -hmm. the deer herd, is this going to send all the deer over to New York, or what's this going to do to, for the hunters? Sound carries. I am not a physicist, but I am aware of the fact that sound carries through water. Extremely, it can be very painful. I'm thinking of like, even Lake Champlain, the, the sound for the poor fish. It has to be scary. I think even champ's going to jump out of the water with this. But I have a uh, huge concern, not only for people and their businesses, but also for the wildlife, because that was the first reason we came. That's why this area got settled. One of the things that, other things that attracted me to Vermont uh, was uh, kayaking. Um, I, I've, I was a member of the uh, Adirondack Mountain Club in, uh, in uh, Albany, New York, and I went kayaking with them uh, every, every week on the Mohawk and Hudson Rivers. Uh, but we also made trips up here to, uh, to kayak on Lake Champlain. I've kayaked all around uh, Lake Champlain, and I, uh, the first thing I, one of the first things I did uh, uh, moving to Burlington was to join the uh, Champlain Kayak Club. And, uh, and I've been out there looking for Champ. I haven't seen him yet, but uh, uh, I keep hoping maybe to get a glimpse of Champ one of these days. Um, well, if this plane flies overhead, he just may be jumping out of the water there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or they may, it may just scare him away. And, and no one will ever see, see him. him. That's true, too. Strong possibility. Hmm. Well, Phyllis, it's, uh, it's been uh, interesting talking to you, and uh, I'm glad that you... Uh, uh, that you enjoy uh, or that you appreciate living in Vermont? I appreciate it very, very sincerely. Uh, I should also say our, our library here, our public library, is a wonderful, wonderful little library. And they also, uh, you can call Reader's Aid, and they will bring them to the top of the square for those people that have health issues or physical issues. And I think that's a wonderful, wonderful gift that they're giving the community. I know they do it at many places, but I just want to give them recognition. It's appreciated at our building a lot. Everything. I mean, I could just babble on and on and on about all the wonders. Well, thank you for coming today, Phyllis, and for our viewers at home. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And uh, remember to vote on November 6th and also for the uh, primaries on August 28th. And uh, I hope you tune in again uh, next month for another
uh, episode of Vermont Today. And don't forget, I will be voting for you, Terry. With Thank you, all Phyllis. my heart, I mean that. I really do. I want to congratulate you for putting out the effort to run, too. That's not an easy task.